Chapter 13 Zeus and Hera Only Zeus, the father of heaven, might wield the thunderbolt, and it was with the threat of its fatal flash that he controlled his quarrelsome and rebellious family of Mount Olympus. He also ordered the heavenly bodies, made laws, enforced oaths, and pronounced oracles. When his mother, Rhea, foreseeing what trouble his lust would cause, forbade him to marry, he angrily threatened to violate her. Though she at once turned into a menacing serpent, this did not daunt Zeus, who became a male serpent, and twining about her in an indissoluble knot, made good his threat. It was then that he began his long series of adventures in love. He fathered the seasons and the three fates on Themis, the Charites on Eurynome, the three muses on Mnemosyne, with whom he lay for nine nights, and some say Persephone, the queen of the underworld, whom his brother Hades forcibly married on the nymph Styx. Thus he lacked no power either above or below earth, and his wife Hera was equal to him in one thing alone, that she could still bestow the gift of prophecy on any man or beast she pleased. Zeus and Hera bickered constantly. Vexed by his infidelities, she often humiliated him by her scheming ways. Though he would confide his secrets to her, and sometimes accept her advice, he never fully trusted Hera, and she knew that if offended beyond a certain point, he would flog or even hurl a thunderbolt at her. She therefore resorted to ruthless intrigue, as in the matter of Heracles' birth, and sometimes borrowed Aphrodite's girdle to excite his passion and thus weaken his will. He now claimed to be Cronus's firstborn son. A time came when Zeus's pride and petulance became so intolerable that Hera, Poseidon, Apollo, and all the other Olympians except Hestia surrounded him suddenly as he lay asleep on his couch and bound him with rawhide thongs, knotted into a hundred knots so that he could not move. He threatened them with instant death, but they had placed his thunderbolt out of reach and laughed insultingly at him. While they were celebrating their victory and jealously discussing who was to be his successor, Thetis the Nereid, foreseeing a civil war on Olympus, hurried in search of the hundred-handed Briareus, who swiftly untied the thongs, using every hand at once, and released his master. Because it was Hera who had led the conspiracy against him, Zeus hung her up from the sky with a golden bracelet about either wrist and an anvil fastened to either ankle. The other deities were vexed beyond words, but dared attempt no rescue for all her piteous cries. In the end, Zeus undertook to free her if they swore never more to rebel against him, and this each in turn grudgingly did. Zeus punished Poseidon and Apollo by sending them as bondservants to King Laomedon, for whom they built the city of Troy, but he pardoned the others as having acted under duress.